All right, hi everyone, and welcome to our video today. We're gonna be doing the math section of an ACT exam and just going over general math tips for both the SAT and the ACT. Before we get started into the practice, I wanted to do a little bit of an overview of College Connect Tempe um, for those of you who might be new. So we are your hub for advising and help with planning for after high school. And this can include anything from FAFSA completion, applications, personal statements, career exploration, and job and internship searching. So for those of you who live in the city of Tempe, we are available at your Tempe Union High Schools, as well as at the Tempe Public Library. Now, for those of you whose schedules might not work with that, or you live a little bit farther, um, we do also offer virtual and online sessions, as well as one-on-one -on -one advising virtually to help you with anything that we can support with. If after this video today, you would like some more support, you can go ahead and navigate to tempe.gov slash college connect. Um, if you'd like to do some more SAT or ACT prep, my name is Sarabi and you can find me on your dropdown. But if not, you can meet with any advisor to find some support with any of those tasks that I mentioned earlier. Now with that introduction, we're gonna jump right into some math practice for the ACT exam. Um, for those of you who may not have seen this before, your math exam will be 60 minutes for 60 questions. So you get around one minute per question, which is very fast. Um, of course, today we are not gonna be doing the entire section, but I have highlighted some questions that I would like to review with you all. Um, if this is your first time seeing the exam, this is the directions that you will be provided. Um, you are allowed to use a calculator on this exam, which is awesome. But for those of you who might be studying for the SAT, please keep in mind there's a separate section for the calculator portion and the non-calculator portion. With that being said, if you'd like to read through this, go ahead and pause here to read through it. If not, we're going to go ahead and jump right in. We're starting with number one. We have 15 pieces of paper that were put into a jar. One piece will be drawn. What is the probability of drawing a piece of paper with a number less than nine written on it? So let's think about this, right? We've got um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. We want less than nine. So we want one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. We do not want nine included. So now we know that there are eight options. And out of total, we have 15. So out of so when we're doing a fraction, we've got our total on the bottom and then, you know, the actual fraction that we're looking for. So the section that we're looking for on top. So in this case, 8 over 15 is our final answer. We're going to go ahead and jump to 3 and 4 right here. If you are working ahead, um, just keep in mind that I have some stars next to the ones that we're going to be looking on. Um, so we're looking at number three when x equals two, 10 plus three parentheses 12 divided by three x is what? So let's go ahead and plug in uh, x equals two. So we've got, all right, this is equal to 10 plus three divided by that equals 10 plus three, two equals all right and that's how we've done the math here in this case um just keep in mind that the reason i chose this question was to review pemdas pemdas means we're going to do parentheses first so in this case we did those parentheses first which is a 3x we're multiplying 3 with x and then we're doing the division first because those are in the parentheses in this case it's not relevant but exponents does come second and then we've got M, which is multiplication and division come at equal levels, and then addition and subtraction come at equal levels as well. So um, again, make sure you keep that in mind when you are approaching this question. You wanted to, That's why we did this first, because that was in the first parentheses. This was in our next parentheses. We've got multiplication here, so we did that next, and then addition was last. So that's how we got 16 for our answer. That was option B. Let's jump down to four. The reason I wanted to choose this one as well is to talk about absolute value. So when we're looking at absolute value, we are going to be taking, regardless of if it is positive or negative, we're going to take the positive of the final result. So whatever's an absolute value, that value should only be positive. Absolute value kind of also serves as parentheses. So in this case, we're going to do the absolute value ones first before we do that final subtraction. So six minus four is two. We're just going to bring that minus down. And three minus... Um, a is negative five. But now remember, as I mentioned, we are doing absolute value. So we're going to take the positive of that. 
So two minus five, we want positive. That means our final answer is two minus five, which is negative three. Now we can have a negative number here because there was no absolute value at the end. It's just whatever's in those little um, like lines that we have to do like that. So therefore G is our final answer. Now we've got number six here. Um, we've got a fourth earned an A, a third earned a B, and the rest earned C. How many students earned a C? So the easiest way to do this is let's simplify our fractions so they're the same, and then we're gonna um, make that fraction a number. So first we've got a fourth of the students earn an A. So a fourth of the 180 students, students earn an A, plus a third of the students earned a B. Now remember, you can use a calculator on this exam. So um, I would recommend having a calculator open with you. Um, you can also use Desmos, which is an online calculator. So to solve how many students have an A, um, I'm using a graphing calculator in this case. I think it's best for these exams. Um, if you don't already have one, you can again use Desmos and you should be able to use a scientific calculator for most of this exam as well. So in order to do this, I'm doing 180 times one divided by four, because that's what a fraction is, right? So this is what it looks like on the calculator. And I'm just hitting enter and we find out that we have 45 students who got an A. I'm doing the same thing, but with one third. And I find that 60 students got a B. So now total, how many students have we already calculated for? That is um, 105. Now, the remaining have a C. So if we know A and B is 105, we know just to get the remaining, we're going to do some simple subtraction. Again, you could plug this into a calculator, but it is also important that you're able to do this math um, by hand as well, because keep in mind, your calculator might die on you. And sometimes it's going to be faster to do it by hand than with the calculator. So total, we find that 75 students have completed the class with a C, and so 75 is our answer. All right, we're going to jump down here to nine. All right, let's see. So we know that, let's see, D, E, and F, G are all parallel with B, C. So if they're parallel, that means we're going to have the same ratios for everything. Oops. Now, in this case, we see that here with AD, we have eight and then AE is 16. So now we see it's a one to two ratio. So now let's use that information right here. If we have one as seven, then E to G over here, over here, right? We're doing the same ratio here, here. So we're just doing, in this case, we did eight times two is 16. Here we're gonna do seven times two, which is 14. And then we're gonna do uh, six times two, which is 12. Now they're asking for the length of AC. So that means they're asking for the length of this whole thing. The good thing is we've already solved the components so we can just add together. We've got 16 plus 14 plus 12, which will be 42. That means our final answer is gonna be D. All right. Uh... Our next question, we're gonna jump down a little bit, is down here. There we go. And again, as I mentioned, we are not doing all the questions today. So if you're doing some practice and there are some questions that we haven't gone over today, but you would like some support with, please feel free to schedule an appointment after this video so you can learn how to do them and work with me or another advisor one-on-one. -on -one. So in this case, we have, again, we're looking at some parallel triangles and some lines, AB is equal to AC. So AB is equal to AC. Now what's critical to know when it comes to lines is those related angles are also gonna be the same. So if these two lines are the same, then these two angles are gonna be the same as well. Um, because you know this one goes to this and this one goes to this. This one will not be the same because it's going to this line, that one is not parallel to anything else. So an important thing to know is the total degrees in a triangle is 
always 180 degrees. Now we already know there's 58 that's been taken from us with one angle. So I'm just plugging this into a calculator and I'm getting 122. So that means we know that this angle right here, this angle right here plus this angle right here. So angle B plus angle C together is 122. And we also know that angle B is equal to angle C. So therefore, this can be simplified into two times angle B because I'm just plugging in angle B for angle C is 122 and we get angle B is equal to 61 degrees and then angle C is also 61 degrees. So therefore we know that our answer will be D. All right, and we're gonna jump down here. We're gonna do a little bit of statistics. Um, let's see, so Jamal scored a 61, 76, 79, 80, 80, 84, 91. All right, on his eighth, he got... All right, so we're going to compare um, his old stats to his new, new stats. So let's make a little table ourselves. We've got old, new. We're going to do mean, median, and mode. All right, so your mean is your average, and you get your mean by adding up all your scores and dividing by the total number of scores you have. So let's do this together for his eight exams now. So for the first seven, we had 61 plus 76 plus 79 plus 80 plus 80 plus 84 plus 91 plus now he scored a 90. And I divided that by eight. And so we find that his average is going to be 80.13. Let's see. So his new average is 80.13. His old average was a 79. Again, average is mean. Now his median uh, will not have changed most likely, but let's see, his old median was, or actually we can fill in this entire old table because they give us everything. So his old median was 80. Um, now we see median is gonna be our middle value. So in this case, um, our median has not changed and it will remain to be 80. And then now, uh, let me just double check that. Yep, all right. And then the mode is the number that occurs most commonly. And in this case, that has not changed because 80 is still the number we see most in this list, right? The addition of 90 does not change anything for that. The only thing it changed was the mean. So now let's compare. So in this case, we know that mean and median are equal. So let's go ahead and already make sure that we only are looking at those options. So this one says median is greater than incorrect. This one says median is greater than incorrect. This one says median greater is incorrect. This one says mode is greater, also incorrect. So just by that, E is our best option. We can double check. And this is true because we see that the new one is greater than the older one. So that would be the easiest way to do this, I would say. There are some shortcuts you can take, but I wanna keep everything as standardized as possible so that you don't make any errors. All right, let's see our next question. We're just gonna scroll down a little bit right here. We're doing number 32. We have four identical glasses. And basically what they're telling us is that we can take everything and pour it into a big jug and then pour it back out equally. So in order, if we want to find out how much would be in each one, if they were equal, we need to add up everything we have, and then we need to divide it by each. Now, this is just a representation, a physical representation of an average, right? So an average is when you take everything and you divide it by the total number. We're doing the same thing here. So let's add up everything we have. In the first one, they tell us we have zero, and then we have one fourth of a cup, and then we've got one half, and then four fifths. Now, the best way to do this, I would say, is I, I try to reduce the use of a calculator as much as possible because you'll find that most act, most um, answer options are in fractions. So I like to keep things in fractions. So I'm going to make everything with the same common denominator. So we still got zero plus I'm going to choose 20 as my common denominator because that's the one that's most in common with four, two, and five. So we're going to do 20, 20, 20. And so one fourth is equal to five over 20. And the way I'm doing that is I'm multiplying both the top and bottom by five. Um, same thing here, we've got, we're doing 
top and bottom multiply by 10 because two times 10 is 20. Same thing here, we're gonna multiply by four and we're gonna get 16. Now let's add all of these together. We get the 31 divided by 20. So that is the total amount of water we have. Now we're gonna divide this whole thing by four because we wanna get into four cups. Um, division is the same thing as multiplication by reciprocal. So we're gonna multiply by one fourth and we're gonna get 31 over 80. Therefore, K is our best answer. All right, and then, yep, there we go. That's how we did that. All right, and then let's keep going. Um, let's see, where did I choose the next question? Right, all right. Um, again, I've just chosen questions that I think will introduce you all to the important concepts on this exam that I also think would not be as easily answered if you um, can just use a calculator. So these are the ones I'm trying to do without a calculator. All right, so in this case, we have i equals square root of negative one. So what's critical to note is if i equals the square root of negative one, i squared is always equal to negative one. That also means i to the fourth equals positive one. So now let's take that information and plug it in. i plus, remember i squared is negative one, plus i cubed equals i cubed plus Remember, positive 1 plus i5. Now, let's simplify this. We get, um, remember, i cubed is the same thing. You know, let's see if this equals i squared times i. So that means negative 1 times i. So now we've got i plus negative 1 plus negative 1 times i over... Oh, looks like I'm running out of room. Uh, let's see. I times negative one plus one plus. Now I to the fifth is going to be very similar. It's I to the fourth times I. That means it's one times I. Um, times I. So now if we do this, we get, um, let's see. It's, I'm going to. Push this back up here. We've got i plus, or we've got i minus 1 minus i over minus i plus 1 plus i. We can cancel those i's out, so we get negative 1 over 1 equals negative 1. So negative 1 is our final answer. Looks like that just popped up. Um, go ahead and pause the screen here if that doesn't make sense. Um, and then I just did an arrow here because I was running out of space. But as you can see, we can just cancel out the I's and we were able to get negative one as our final answer. Uh, all right, and then it looks like that was actually our final question for today's practice. Um, again, I didn't want to keep this video too long. I just wanted to introduce you all to some key concepts you'll see in both the SAT and the ACT. If you have any questions after this video or, you know, as I was scrolling, you might have seen some questions that you think might have been good to review, then please feel free to let me know um, via email or scheduling a one-on-one -on -one advising appointment, and we can go over those questions that you might not be familiar with. I know one thing that I do wish we had some more time for would have been some um, word problems. I know we did one or two, but it would be good to do more, so just keep that in mind to do some review on that. Again, if you have any questions, schedule a one-on-one -on -one advising appointment. If not, good luck studying and have an amazing day.